بالله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا الدين القويم وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي اجتباه وهدى ورحمة للعالمين أرسله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي الخاطئة بتقوى الله عز وجل وأحثكم وإياي على طاعته وأستفتح بالذي هو خير يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون All praise and thanks be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى over and over again We praise him, we thank him, we seek his help and assistance Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide And whomever Allah leaves to stray, none can guide We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى the one who guided us to this straight religion. We would not have been guided had Allah not guided us. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship and unconditional obedience except for Allah alone without any partner with him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and messenger. O oh Allah, raise his position more and more. Shower him with more blessings, along with his family members, his companions, and all those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment O oh Allah, make us among them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I urge you and myself to have taqwa of Allah Ta'ala, to fear Allah Ta'ala, to fulfill the commands of Allah, avoid the prohibitions that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala commanded us to avoid. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says that, O oh you who believe, have taqwa of Allah, be conscious of Allah, and let every soul reflect, وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ فِي غَدْرٍ Let every soul reflect what it has sent forth for tomorrow. What have you done for tomorrow? What have you prepared for tomorrow? And tomorrow means the hereafter, means the eternal life, the real life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, be conscious of Allah. Remember that Allah ta'ala is watching you in every moment, in every second, everywhere, in every place, he's watching you. You can never escape from his watchfulness, subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his muraqaba. And then he's saying, and let every soul reflect, let every person think, what have you sent forth? What have you prepared for your eternal life, for tomorrow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tells us in the Holy Quran تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ أَلَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورِ Blessed and glorified the one under his control all dominion and all of the heavens and the earth and he is able to do everything the one who created الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم He is the one who created death and life so that he tests you so that he tests you who is better in doing the good deeds ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا So Allah Ta'ala created us in this life as a test and now we are taking the test now we are taking the test and we are facing or getting many questions and those questions are in different ways different types different circumstances and problems and calamities those are the questions how are you answering how are you reacting we have made some of you as tests for one another. 
We have made some of you as test for some others. Will you show patience? وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا And your Lord is all watching and knowing and seeing what we're going to do and what we're doing. And then you're going to get to your results. At the time of death, you're going to start taking the results. You're going to start knowing whether you passed or you failed at the time of death. And then you're going to start getting rewards or punishments in your grave. All the, the way until the day of judgment happens. And when you come out of your grave, the reward and punishment will continue. So this is the reality of this life. This is the reality of this life. We are here for a short period of time. And death, as we believe as Muslims, is when the soul departs the body. That is death. Death for us as Muslims is not the end. Is not the end. No. It's a transitional period. It's a transition from one life to another life. From this short temporary life to the eternal everlasting life that is death so the believer doesn't fear death the believer doesn't fear to meet Allah Ta'ala on the contrary he loves to meet Allah Ta'ala when the angel of death came to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him if he wants to he wants to stay more in this life and he would say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam no, I want to be with my, the most sublime and high companion, Allah Ta'ala. The most beloved one to me, Allah Ta'ala. As he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even in his travel, he would say, Allahumma anta sahibu fi safar. Oh Allah, you are my companion in, in my travel. Ahdur al-jawal. So he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he chose to meet Allah Ta'ala. He, because he wants to get to know Allah Ta'ala more and be with Allah Ta'ala, get his rewards, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is how the believers they love to meet Allah Ta'ala. And when they are required or requested, they die for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. They sacrifice their own souls for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. And they do it with love. As many of the Sahaba who were defending the Muslim land, they would run to the battle. They would race to the battles, even though they know they might die in those battles. But because they know Allah commanded them to defend their land, they go, even though they know they're gonna die. But because they believe and they know well that this death is only a transition to the better life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qahara ibadahu bil mawt. Every single creature will die. Even the angel of death will die. Even the angel whom Allah Ta'ala sends to take the souls of people, he will die. And no one remains except for Allah Ta'ala. وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everyone on it, everyone in the universe will die. And only the supreme essence of your Lord, that of Al-Aliyah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, only Him will remain. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَنَا الْمَلِكِ أَيْنَ الْمُلُوكِ Where are the kings? Where are the oppressors? Where are the dictators? Those oppressors and dictators who are now killing people. 
just to remain in power. Where are they? What can they do when death comes to them? Can their armies and their police and their security forces, can they defend them? Can they protect them from the angel of death? And those who support the oppressors, and those who support the dictators, can they run away from Allah's punishment? And it's very painful in these days that we see how the world, especially the Arab world, how they are overlooking the crimes of some of the Arab leaders. And they're hosting them and welcoming them as if they did nothing. As if they did nothing. Those dictators, they killed hundreds of thousands of people, innocent people, and still they're not brought to punishment. Still they are being welcomed and hosted and honored. But if they run away from the punishment in this world, they can never escape the punishment in the next world. And when death comes to them, neither of them will be able to help the other. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَئِذٍ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ When the soul reaches the throat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he's telling us in Surah Al-Waqiyah, when you're looking at this person who is dying, and we are nearer to him than you, but you don't see. فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you're not accountable to us, and if you're able, bring, bring this soul back, if you can. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the categories of those people. Tells us the categories of all people. فَأَمَّا إِن كَانَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ if this person who is dying is from those who were close to Allah Ta'ala, they obey Allah Ta'ala, they follow the commands of Allah Ta'ala, then they'll be enjoying Jannah and comfort. And if he is from the people of the right, that's a lower, that's a good category of people, but they are lower than those who are near to Allah Ta'ala. Those who are near to Allah Ta'ala means in this world they did much more voluntary worship and they drew near to Allah Ta'ala through ibadah, through voluntary acts of worship. وَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ الضَّالِّينَ فَنُزُلٌ مِّنْ حَمِيمٍ وَتَصْلِيَةُ جَحِيمٍ And if he was, he or she was from the people who disbelieved, the disobedient ones, those who did not care about the commands of Allah Ta'ala, فَنُزُلٌ مِّنْ حَمِيمٍ The abode of fire is waiting for them. Everyone who dies, and everyone will die. Everyone will die except for Allah Ta'ala. And after everyone dies, Allah Ta'ala will command the angel to Sayyidina Israfil to blow the trumpet, right? And yanfukh fi sur so that all people will be resurrected for account. And people will start getting there Report cards. Now as we are leaving the school year and students looking for their report cards, we have to think about our eternal report cards. How much I'm going to get? Will I pass or fail? We have to think about that eternal report card. Everyone who dies will regret. Those who did good, they're going to regret that they didn't do better. And those who did bad, 
they're going to regret that they didn't do good. Of course, regretfulness of some people of Jannah will be completely different from the regretfulness and the suffering and the bitterness of the people of the hellfire. May Allah not make us among them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the speech and follow its best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who prepare for that transition, who are who prepare themselves so that when the angel of death comes, they are ready and they love to be with Allah Ta'ala, to meet Allah Ta'ala, means to receive the rewards from Allah Ta'ala and to get to know Allah Ta'ala more. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala make us of those who will make the best use of this chance of life that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has given them. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I say this and I ask Allah to forgive me and forgive you. Seek His forgiveness. He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلق والبشر اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد ما اتصلت عين بنظر أو سمعت أذن بخبر عباد الله اتقوا الله فيما أمر وانتهوا عما نهى عنه وزجر I urge you on my side to have taqwa of Allah سبحانه وتعالى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا هو سبحانه وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. From the advice of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that we have to take seriously أكثر ذكر هادم اللذات he said صلى الله عليه وسلم he said mention a lot the destroyer of pleasures أكثر don't only remember death the destroyer of pleasures, that's death. It will destroy every pleasure you have in this world. And he's not saying, remember death, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He is saying, remember death abundantly. Because when you remember death, you remember that you're here for a short period of time. You remember, and that's the most serious thing, is that you don't know when death will come to you. You're not sure. And that's why you have to be ready at any moment. That's why the scholars of Islam said, Once you make a sin, you have to repent instantly because you don't know. Maybe the angel of death will come to you before you repent from that sin. So you have to be ready. As mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that he would وسلم, he would not raise one foot and put another, or he would not raise one foot unless, or unless he thinks that death is nearer to him than the time in which he will put the other foot, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So with every step, he thinks that he might not be able to make the, the next step. So that's how the believer should be. And as an action items that we have to think as believers is to prepare ourselves by fulfilling the obligations of Allah Ta'ala. Maintaining our salawat. Many Muslims, they missed salawat. They think that if I miss some salawat and I just ask Allah for forgiveness, He will forgive me. Yeah, He will forgive you if you seek forgiveness and pay what you missed. You pray what you missed. You took some money from some people without right, unjust, unjustly. It's not enough to ask Allah for forgiveness. You must give them their rights back or they forgive you. If they forgive you, that's good. If not, you must give them their rights back so that Allah forgives you. So we have to, number one, 
check ourselves, check our accounts. Have we fulfilled the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to fulfill? Have we wronged people? Are there any people who have rights upon us? Because you're not going to go to Jannah until you're clean and clear of any rights. Whether financial or moral, you have to give people their rights back. And the third thing is you have to try to do extra and do voluntary acts of worship so that you don't regret that you didn't do more. Try to do more. Try to make use of this time that Allah has given you and Allah will ask you about People who think about this, they travel from city to city to earn of that, to earn hasanat and good deeds. We have a brother who comes from Virginia or Maryland. He drives four hours to come and read 10 pages of the Quran. Four hours driving to come read 10 pages of the Quran. We have some families they come from other cities. They drive, drive more than an hour, two hours every week to bring their kids for Sunday school so that their kids learn. We see these people. So there are people who are aware and they know the value of time, the value of knowledge. On another topic that we cannot miss and we cannot skip, on May 14, 1948, a cat catastrophe took place. A Nakba, as we call it in Arabic. Nakba means calamity. Catastrophe happened in our Muslim land, in our holy land of Palestine. What happened? We have to know. A group of Zionists, groups of Zionists, with the help of the British colonization, they attacked the Muslim and Christian Arab villages in Palestine, 1948. In May 14, and they made massacres. They're claiming that this is their land. They're claiming they want to establish a Jewish state, a state only for the Jews, as now their leaders boast about and say out loud and clear. They say this is a Jewish state. So those Zionists made massacres and that year in that month and killed a lot of Palestinians and forced them out of their homes until now we have millions of Palestinians all over the world as refugees their land was taken from them without right and that's the catastrophe that the Arabs considered right after the establishment of this so-called state of Israel, this Zionist entity that was based and established on massacres and killings and stealing the lands of the Palestinians. And bit by bit, they started with a little piece of land of Palestine and now they take and control the vast majority of this land. So we have to know this and we have to remember our history and we have to educate ourselves and we have to strive and struggle with all the possible legal ways and means that we have every Muslim in his country to, to seek all the possible legal ways and means to restore the rights to its people. And this is how Muslims should behave. They defend the rights of the oppressed people whenever they can and everywhere. And regardless of their religion, 
And that's how the Muslims, the Muslims themselves defended the Jews who were running from Europe. And Muslims gave them protection. And Muslims gave them shelters in their countries. And until now, they live in many Muslim countries. The same with all other people. So Muslims don't have animosity with any religion. We don't have animosity with the Christianity or Judaism or any religion. But we do have animosity with injustice. And we do have to strive against the oppressors and the occupiers regardless of their religion. That's something we have to know. And we have to struggle and we have to strive and along with that, we have to pray to Allah Ta'ala to help us and help all of the oppressed people and the occupied people whose lands are is occupied to help them get the liberation and to protect them from all types of oppression and dictatorships. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala give relief and support and protection to all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering everywhere. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب للدعوات اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تنسنا ذكرك ولا تهتك عنا سترك ولا تؤمنا مكرك ولا تجعلنا من الغافلين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عليك بالطغاة المستبدين المجرمين فإنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى من الطغاة المحتلين بقدرتك يا ذا القوة المتين oh Allah forgive us, forgive our parents, forgive our all Muslims and believers, the dead and the living ones, the men and the women oh Allah have mercy on our loved ones who passed away, ya Rabbi Al-Alameen oh Allah have mercy on our sheikhs and teachers who taught us and who have who raised us when we were ignorant and when we were young in knowledge. Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen, have mercy on our parents who raised us, who have mercy on our parents as they raised us when we were young. Ya Akram al Akramin, you are the one who turns the hearts over. Keep our hearts steadfast on your path, Ya Arham al Rahimin. Give support and protection to all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering everywhere, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. Oh Allah, help Muslims to liberate Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and all of the occupied Muslim lands from all occupiers and all dictators. Ya the Quwwat al Mateen, you are the one who controls everything. Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen, wa salli ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa alihi wa sahabi ajma'een wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Al-Alameen, aqim al-Salaam. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, shadu an la.